Hi everyone, I am Swatpop Gaming. Welcome to this tutorial on widget filtering with an input field. All right, let's take a quick little look at what we're actually going to do here today. So if I press the play button here, uh, we get a list of six different items with a name, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Alpaca, Breaker, and Caesar. What I want to do is here where it says empty text, I'm going to start pushing in some uh, keys. So let's start with Bravo, B, R, and it's filtering in out everything that are not corresponding with the text I'm putting in. And if I leave it empty, it will display all of the choices we have. And it will not only take you from the start, you can take any letters from the, the words. So if I do SA, it is Caesar because you got SA in the middle there. And if you do uh, PH, it's alpaca. And if you do P, it's both alpaca and alpha. So that is how we're going to work. So let's get started. So let's take a look at what we have here. This is a basic new project with no content in it. And all I have done is to save out the map. All right, so what we're gonna do first here is that we're gonna create a new HUD widget and we're gonna name it. So we go into our UI folder here and we're gonna right click and go to user interface and widget blueprint. Let's choose the user widget here and we're gonna name this test widget gonna go into this and I'm gonna pull this in here so what I want to do is I want to go into edit and uh, editor preferences and I'm gonna change this uh, asset editor open location I'm gonna put this to main window and I'm gonna close that so every time I open a new uh, widget it will pop up here up in the main window here so let's uh, start with adding a canvas here. Canvas panel, drag that in there. We're gonna put in a image. Let's see, okay. And the image, we're gonna drag it out to be the same size. So 1280 and 720, hmm. See, that was not quite enough, so I'm gonna drag it out like that. I'm gonna change the color here, put it on black. I'm gonna put this on uh, the alpha on 0 0.8. Okay, let's add a scroll box to the canvas. Doesn't need to be perfect, all we need to have is something to work with. I'm gonna drag it down a little bit like that. And we're going to have a text field. Grab that, put that in there. And we're going to, same thing here, we're just going to pull it down there. We're going to change the justification. We're going to change the size. See if we can mark it there, 48. We'll put in a hint text. And uh, let's see. Change the color a little bit. And that's it. We're going to compile and save. We're going to go into our main window here and go into open level blueprint. So at the begin play, we want to create the widget. And we're gonna change this to test widget, and then we go. and we're gonna add this to viewport. Awesome. Compile, save, and just press play to test it. And there we go. Right. I'm gonna also change this to um, a new window here. Boom. We got that there. See, it doesn't drag all the way out. We're going to add. Going to change the size of the image. So it's all the way. Save. And test it again. And there we go. All right. And now we got the end the text as well. So we can 
right wherever we want there. Perfect. Now we're going to go back to the content browser here and we're going to create something to populate the scroll box, right? So we're going to create a new widget, call it test item. So uh, use widget, widget blueprint, use a widget, test item. Open this guy up. We're going to add an overlay. And this overlay, we're going to change the, uh, the screen size to custom, and we're going to put it at 520 times 85. We're going to add the image. Drag on top. This image, we're going to expand to the max. We're also going to add a horizontal box. go and we're gonna take the horizontal we're gonna stretch that to the max as well now we're gonna add a text field and put it on top of the horizontal box and this is what we're gonna call item text we're gonna change this to fill i'm gonna add the justification to center First of all, we're going to go to the image. We're going to change this to a different color. There we go. How about green or blue? Blue, that's fine. Okay. Now we're going to go back to the text box here. And just for the hell of it, we are going to go down to outline settings, change that to two. And why not add some kind of shadow as well drag this and change the output to one all right and let's see here would like to change this to center horizontal and center vertical let's go into the graph here now and add a variable that we can work with so there so and item name change this to a text variable this needs to be uh, instance editable and exposed on spawn so we can set it straight from where we are calling this widget now we're going to go back to the designer we're going to change the binding here for the text block to item name all right Going to compile and save. Let's go back into the test widget here and go to the graphs. We're going to add an array that we can work with. So it's an array of names. So let's call this um, list items. I'm going to be a string array, string, and we're going to change this version to an array. So this is, for example, your inventory or whatever you have uh, that you can work with. This is the list of all the items we're going to work with. So we're going to add some items to our array here at the event construct. So we're going to drag off this, get the list items and add to the array. And this is just to have something to work with. We're going to do that a couple of times. So let's see, alpha. We're just going to have something to name this. Let's see, one, two, how many items we want to have? Four, five. And all of them is going to be connected to the same list items. So let's um, name the second one here, Bravo. We're gonna have Charlie. And Alpaca, something to, you know, so the search function uh, can find multiple things. Uh, breaker, 
I'm gonna have one more. Let's see, come on. Uh, name this um, Caesar. At least we have something to work with. It doesn't really matter what to call it because this is just to show off the function. Right? <laughs> Drag that down there. Perfect. Alright, uh, before I move on, I want to add a on change function on this editable text here. There we go. On text change. Do we have that there? We're going to add a for each loop here. And this is going to be for each item in this array. Or I can actually drag out a new copy of this out here instead. There we go. So this array is now containing these items. One, two, three, four, five, six items, right? So for each of these arrays, we want to add them to our scroll box. So we're going to create a widget here. So we're going to create that, create a widget. And we're going to do a test widget, a test item. And we are going to take our array element here and connect it to the item name. And now we need to add this to a scroll box. We have to go back actually here and mark a scroll box and uh, push this is variable so we can access it. There we go. That's the scroll box now. We can get that and we are going to add child to that. I'm going to drag that one over here and take the return value and put that in content. All right. So basically now we're going to have a list of all our children in our list so we just press the play button and test it out and there we go we got the alpha bravo charlie alpaca breaker and caesar in our list all right so now we want to be able to type something in and it will automatically populate with those choices that we have so let's do that let's go into our test widget here again so Whenever we put something into our um, text box, we want this to, tr to, to trigger, right? So the first thing I want to do is I want to remove all the children. So I'm going to take our scroll box and we're going to clear children. So we're just going to, what we're actually doing is we're actually basically filtering in all the children rather than filtering them out. So every time we type something, we will automatically repopulate the scroll box with the items we want. And then we're going to add another for each loop. So get the list item for each loop. There we go, and now we're going to populate this again with items that we want, but only the ones that are corresponding with the text that we have put in here. So let's right click here and we're going to put in contains and under string, we have a function called contains and in this node, we actually are comparing two strings. So we have a text field here, and this is a uh, what we're putting into our text box. And we will be able to push that into this string node. It will automatically convert. And what are we comparing this node to? What are we comparing this text with? Well, we're comparing it with what is in the array element. So the question is, is our text that we have in our text box 
con if that is the same as is contained within our item. That is true. So we can put in a branch here. I'm going to pull this re return value and put that as a condition. Then we want to create a widget. If that is true, we want to create a widget. And it's an item test item here. And what is it we want to populate the item name with? Well, the array element. And then we're going to add it to our scroll box. Add child. All right. So now, for whenever we change the text here, it will clear all the children. It will take the list items again that we have. It will check if the text correspond with the with the name of the item. If that is true, it will create one of those widgets and will add the child. And that will do that for each of the items in our array. Let's test this and see if it works. So I'm going to compile and save this and we're going to push the play button. So let's enter Charlie here. Let's see if we start with a C. Oh, uh, Charlie, Alpaca and Caesar there. So Charlie. Oh, there we go. Now, if we are removing one letter, it will automatically add the, the rest. So let's see if we do remove one more. All of a sudden, all of them disappear because nothing is actually working. So we need to change that. We need to be able to uh, tell it that if this is empty, then we want to see all of them. But we're going to add that functionality in a second here. We can actually add a B R A V O, and all of a sudden they are there. Breaker, for example, breaker. Everything works fine. Okay, perfect. So we're going to go back to our test, test widget here. And we want to put in a new thing here that's saying they want to check if this is empty. If this is empty, we want to do something. If it's not empty, we want to do something else, right? So if we drag this and write is empty, then we get something called text is empty. And that is a Boolean. So we all we have to do is put in a branch. Put that in there. Boom, boom, boom. So if this is not empty, we're going to put it down here. So if it's not empty, we want to do the check everything here. If it is empty, well, we are still going to clear this before we populate it. So we can drag that in there. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to copy these lines here. And place it in here. We could probably actually, if we want to clean it up a little bit, um, we can probably do this. Just push it up there and it will automatically use the same nodes. So if we compile that and save, we can now test it. So enter text, bravo, and remove everything and it populates. Alpaca. Uh, if you just do ache breaker and AV is bravo, bravo, and AR. Now, if we do capital AR, it still works. So, we got nothing to do with that, right? CA alpaca. All right, so that's it. That's the tutorial on how to filter in and filter out it's very simple uh, but um, if you've never done it before it's a good practice to play around with 
So thank you for, for joining me here on uh, Swap Up Gaming channel. And uh, if you like this content, why don't you subscribe? Um, and I'll see you next time. See ya. Bye.